Hey, this is Lewis from SoFly. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Typography tab in Oxygen. I'm also going to give you a few tips on getting your fonts, your te the text on your page, to look good. I learned all of this in a book called Practical Typography, which I highly recommend. So, the main thing you want to focus on is getting your body text to look good, because that's most of the text on your site. So not your headings, but your body text. Now, Typically, by default, I think browsers use a default body text size of 16 pixels. This worked back when screens were much smaller than they are, much lower resolution than they are today, but now 16 pixels is often too small. So you may as well make it bigger. The bigger it is, the easier it is to read. So I say go for somewhere around 20 pixels, maybe even bigger. Maybe smaller if you want. you got a really a lot of text on the page, etc. Um, so let's go ahead and make this, um, let's go with 21 here for now, and we'll tweak it in a little bit later. Um, then the next thing you want to worry about is line length. You don't want too many words per line. You don't want the I to have to go, you know, all the way across. So let's, um, a good rule of thumb for line length is you want two and a half alphabets. So... I'm just going to type out an alphabet, and then I'm going to paste it three times. And you want base anywhere from two to three, but two and a half is a good rule of thumb. So maybe we want our lines to be about this long. So that means that either the font is too small, or this is probably too big, or it means the section is too wide. So let's go to our section, go to advanced size and spacing, set a custom width, and let's turn this down until we get just about two and a half alphabets. Okay, that's much more reasonable now. Uh, now the next thing we want to adjust is uh, line length. Let me just move this over so it looks a little bigger. Or sorry, a line height. So if we go to the Advanced Typography tab, I'll just go through all the controls now, and then we'll get to line height. So we have Font Family. This is the font you want to use for your text. I'm just going to use the default, which I specified in Global Styles, which is in Manage Settings. We have our font size. Usually have a shortcut to set that in Basic Styles as well. You have our text color. Make sure there's enough contrast between your um, text color and your background color. I really commonly see people making the text color light. They think that, I don't know what they think actually. They're not thinking. You want enough contrast that this text is easily readable. Uh, font weight, 100 is the lightest, 900 is the darkest, 400 is the default, 700 is standard bold. I recommend not using bold text much, just really use it for emphasis. Then we have text alignment. I also recommend not using centering um, that much. Try to keep your text aligned to the left, and maybe you could center things like headlines and that court kind of thing, but you never want a big wall of text that's all centered. So I'm going set to set this to left. Then on to line height. So. You don't want too much space between your lines. You don't want too little space between your lines. So this is just multiplied by the font size to determine your line height. So this is going to be a line height 2 times 21 is 42. So 1 is too tight. 1.4 is a pretty good default, but you have to adjust this depending on the font that you're using. Um, so my recommendation is just to try to read the text on your page and see where it's easiest. You don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. I think here 1.4, maybe 1.45 looks pretty good. Generally in the range of 1.4 is going to be close for most fonts. If the font has very small letters, it's a small height, uh, then you can turn it down. If the font is very tall, maybe you can turn it up to 1.6. I'm going to go with 1.5 here. Um, the next thing is letter spacing. 
That's a space between letters. On body text, leave that at the default. Uh, sometimes if you're going to make uh, something in all caps, then you might, might want to turn it up. So here I'm going to make a subheading here. Call this subheading. And we will make this... Um, so line it left. So go to section, align everything left. We're going to make this... Go back to typography. I'll make it pretty small. Say 14 pixels, 13 pixels. If you're going to use all caps, then you want to adjust letter spacing. So we'll go text transform, capitalize, sorry, uh, uppercase, and font weight, bold. And when you're doing this, then you maybe want to turn up the letter spacing a bit. One pixel, half a pixel, 0.8 pixels, something like that. Basically, when you're using all caps in a small heading, you can turn up the letter spacing. Um, next up is the text decoration controls, whether it's underlined, overlined, strike through, or none. None is the default. This is mostly used for text links when you want to make them underlined on hover, etc. You have font style, italic. I really recommend using italics sparingly as well. Bold and italic, you just don't want to use too much of it. Uh, we just talked about text transform that you can capitalize everything, uppercase, lowercase, uh, etc. So let's go ahead and adjust this headline or heading. So for headings, you usually want to use less line height. This heading is way too loose. There's way too much space between the lines. So for headings, a good rule of thumb is to use something like 1.2. Tighten it up. This looks much better. And for headings also, it's, it's okay to use bold. Okay, so this is look, looking okay. And then one last thing, I want to talk about the font smoothing control. So font smoothing changes the way the browser anti-aliases the text. Because to get a clear curve, um, you're, there's something called anti-aliasing. I don't want to get into it, but it basically sort of blends the pixels. So it isn't just black and white. The pixels right on the edge are going to be slightly gray. And you could see this if you really zoomed in. Anyway, the font smoothing control controls what type of anti-aliasing is used. By default, subpixel rendering is used. You don't want to change this unless you know what you're doing. If you use anti-aliased, it makes the text appear a little bit thinner. It's hard to tell, but it's actually going to make the text less readable in, mo in most cases. There's one exception to this rule, and that is when you're using light text on a dark background. When you're using light text on a dark background, you almost always want to change font smoothing to anti-aliased. So I'll go ahead and I'll create a button so you see what I mean. So here we have a button. We'll go ahead and make it bold. My button. And it looks good now, but it'll look better if we use anti-aliased on the button. It thins out the text a little bit. If we were going to use a light color button and dark text, say a white button with black text, then we would not want to use anti-alias. Then we use subpixel anti-alias. Um, anyway, I highly recommend the book Practical Typography. That's at practicaltypography.com. This is by a guy named Matthew Butterick. It is a great book on how to make your text look excellent. And then if you want more details on the subpixel anti-aliasing thing, just type in stop fixing font smoothing and you'll find this article and it explains why. Okay, this is Lewis from SoFly and thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please post in the comments.